Genesis 26, verse 18 from the New King James Version. If I were to give this a title this morning, I would simply say, Daddy dug a well. Let's read it together. Genesis 26, verse 18. And Isaac dug again. Say, dug again. The wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. As you look at this story, I want you to understand that Isaac was a very, very blessed man. He was so blessed with all kinds of wealth, all kinds of animals, all kinds of things that the enemy was jealous. The enemy envied him. Didn't like, have you ever met somebody just had so many things that you were a little bit envious? Come on, be truthful. Uh, you know, they had the exact boat that you wanted, had the exact, uh, you know, old car that you wanted, had the, you, you know what I'm talking about. So the enemy was so envious of Isaac that the very wells that they used in order to live by, had to water their cattle, had to water their sheep, had to make sure that the people had enough to drink by, that the enemy, the Philistines, who was always giving the Israelites trouble, went behind them and took a shovel and filled them with dirt. Now how many knows that you don't want a well filled with dirt? You want a well that is flowing with water. And so as you see this, understand that how many believes that we can be so blessed that the enemy would be jealous of us? The Bible kind of confirms that. Whenever uh, you look at the book of Job, Job was so blessed that the devil came to the Lord and said, Lord, if you just take away all of his stuff, come on, somebody say, we, sometimes we have stuff. If you just take away all of his stuff, then he'll curse you and he won't believe in you and he'll, he'll regret the day that he was even born. But how many knows that, that that came out a different way, amen? That God still blessed him in the end. And so you can be so blessed that your enemy is going to be upset about it. So along comes the enemy and they plug up the well in this environment of the Middle East. Plugging up someone's well is an act of war. I mean, it is a Middle Eastern country. It is hot. I've been there. It's desert. You need water, and you need lots of water. And so there were many wells that Abraham had dug, and the enemy was so messed up by it. How many knows that the enemy is going to get messed up by how much God blesses you? Amen? And so the enemy was so uh, messed up by it that they go back and they begin to fill in the wells with dirt. But my Bible tells me that Isaac knew that there were some wells worth working for. There's some wells that Abraham knew were worth fighting for because a well in that environment is necessary for life. It is a matter of life and death in order for you to have a spiritual well in your life. But thank God we've had some daddies, some mamas. Isaac had a father who dug a well. And it was more than just, you see, this is more than just a reference to a physical drink of water, but it is about a, a spiritual well. Something that you can go back to and rely upon. And so it takes faith and work and commitment to dig this kind of well. Every one of you, hold up your spoon this morning. I use this as an illustration, but I'm going to speak over that right now. And I'm going to tell you that I'm asking God to turn your spoon into a shovel. To transform it so that you can dig or redig some wells that God wants to open up in, in your home and in your family. You see, there's some things that need to be opened back up in your home and in your family. Uh, how many want their family to be blessed? In order to, that your family might be blessed, there has to be some digging, some faith and some work and some commitment that goes on. And so today, use that as an illustration Set it on your desk at work. Do something with it so that you will remember that at one point somebody dug a well for you in order for, for you to have what you need spiritually and you must dig a well for your prodigy. 
for those who are coming along behind you. So you can redig some wells that God wants to open up in your home and in your family. Once the wells were clogged up, there was nothing that Isaac could do if he wanted to survive but begin to dig, to redig that well. Now, there's some wells in our life that we need to redig. How, how, how many knows that there's times in your life that, 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 that your spiritual well gets filled up a little bit? And you need to dig it out with the help of the Holy Spirit. You need to be faithful. You need to be dedicated. You need to make sure that, that you are uh, living in such a way that you're getting rid of the dirt. Somebody say, we've got dirt. The enemy wants to fill our well with dirt. So there's no way unless you redig that well. You see, Abraham was the first to dig that well. And he knew that all of the time and all of the energy and all of the expense because it costs money to dig that well, that it was not just for him, not just for his wife, but it was for his son Isaac. And I believe that uh, he knew that it was also going to be for his grandson Jacob. And so he knew that all of that work, somebody tell me, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of times it's work to dig that spiritual well. There's times that you got to get up and do things that you don't want to do. There's times that you need to get up on Sunday morning and help me, Lord, uh, that they don't get mad at me, but you need to get here and get on here on time and go to Sunday school. There's times in your life, even though you're busy, that you need to get here on Wednesday night, bring your kids. I'm preaching this morning. There's times that you need to make that extra dig so that you have not only enough water in your well for you, but you establish a well for the generation to come. Now, you might not like hearing it, but there's times that you got to get up. Somebody get out that spoon, hold it up, and say, I'm going to be faithful to dig the well for my generation. And I'm going to be faithful to dig that well for the generation to come. Abraham knew that it was for more than just his generation. Proverbs 13, 22 says this, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That means that he has enough that he is leaving an inheritance not just for his son or daughter, but for his grandchildren. That's a lot of inheritance. And so uh, that the Bible tells us, well, can I tell you that a good church, not just a good man, but a good church, leaves an inheritance for the children's children. It leaves an inheritance not only for me and for my children, but for their children when they have children. And I'm speaking that over the lives. So they're going to have a godly grandchildren for, for me to enjoy as an inheritance, as a blessing. So uh, I, I want you to understand that, that there, are, uh, uh, there are wells that we need to dig and to redig. Don't let the enemy fill your well back up. So a good church will leave an inheritance. Can I tell you, you need a good church, but so do your children and your grandchildren. You see, we need to make sure that this church is a perpetual, spirit-filled church that not only reaches my current generation, but the generations to come. When I first came here as your pastor, the Lord gave me one word. That word was legacy, and we've never forgot that word. That means that it's not just about me, not just about you, but about our kids and about our grandkids and about our great-grandkids. Some of us uh, may be getting to that age where they'll get some great-grandkids. -grandki and, so, and so it is up to us to keep the well dug out so that there are constantly teachers and preachers of the Word of God in this house. So there are constantly that the doors are opened up, that the light bills are paid, that there's a future uh, uh, looking forward out to that land, that there's always something that is the next thing for the next generation because God didn't call us to sit still and and to do nothing and to sit on our pews and, and to just sit there and to soak and to sour. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. I know it's hard, but, but take it in. God wants us to, say it, redig some spiritual wells. This well that I started talking about had been around for over a hundred years. The well that Abraham had dug and Isaac had to redig, it had been there for a long time. But can I tell you that 
the well at Cross Point. It's been here more than 70 years, folks. It's been here on this corner in some form or fashion, whether it was across the street in that old depot building or down the street in that little building that sits so close to the road uh, that, that somebody told me it sits so close to the road, they come along and said, you can't put it there, but they just kept laying block after block upon block, and, and, they, and they dared them. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they said, we have a presence here on this corner, and it's not just for one generation, but it's for generations to come. There's a well here at Cross Point, and we have to make sure that it's constantly being redug. You see, God's idea of ministry may be different than yours. It's a ministry that goes from generation to generation. Why do you think that God, in the bi biblical Old Testament times, continued to be referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? He's a God of the generations. And not only is ministry supposed to go from generation to generation, not that it doesn't change, but it goes from glory to glory. In other words, it needs to get better and better. I'm not talking about physically better. I don't care uh, about that part. I do care a little bit. But, but what I want you to know is that it's from glory to glory. It's from faith to faith. And we ought to be able to put our children and maybe our grandchildren upon our shoulders that they might reach further in the Lord, that they might have a deeper relationship with the Lord, that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit like we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that they would know God in whom to know is life everlasting, that they would be able to take this God to the next generation that they would be able to take it into the schools we need to dig a well we're securing a well for future generations it's interesting to see that the Philistines they knew Abraham and they knew that it would never happen in his day they waited until he died before they attempted to fill in the well to try to fill my well in not while I'm living, the devil's not going to fill in my well. And I'm going to train up a next generation to understand. I got, I got, I got to dig. I, I, sometimes it requires commitment. Sometimes it requires more than I really want to give. Sometimes there's a well of sacrifice. Sometimes there's a well of giving. Somebody help me out. Sometimes there's a well of prayer and fasting. And there are things that I don't always want to do in my physical body. But I need to redig that well because the next generation needs to know that there's a way to redig the well. I'm going to hear my heart this morning. Don't worry about that baby crying. Because that's another generation that will know about Jesus Christ. You see, a baby crying don't, don't hurt my feelings at all. It just tells me that there's life in the house. That there's life in this place. So there's a, another generation. The Philistines didn't want that generation to get pure water. If the enemy comes along and fills your well with dirt, how many knows that the water is still under that dirt? That The water didn't disappear. It, it's still down there. It, it's still in there. And, and what we got to do is we got to get busy. And there's a, a generation uh, that needs to understand that it's worth the fight for some of these wells. You, you see, uh, you, you need to make sure that you're getting pure water. I believe... If we don't watch out, we'll get used to muddy water. What am I saying? Compromise. Spoke about this a little bit last week. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, they could have stopped at Shur, which is a place of the border, a place of compromise, where you got a little bit of the Israel, but you also got a little bit of Egypt. Uh, there's a little, a little sin in your life, but, but a little of... You know, you're going to church and you're doing some of those things that you need to do. But, but, but so many times we've been, become used to muddy water. 
And, and muddy water won't satisfy. Dirty water won't satisfy. As a matter of fact, if you let it continue to happen, the enemy will keep putting dirt in there until the problem becomes so severe that there is no spiritual refreshment. There is a generation that will grow up that will not know the Lord nor the things that he has done. There is a generation, can I tell you, that I am ashamed to hear that in Pentecostal churches that it has become less and less prevalent for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's a shame, folks. Who do we have to blame? Us. Did our children see us pressing in, praying, fasting, taking time uh, uh, to dig in and to, to get a hold of the Holy Spirit and to let it saturate our, our lives? Did they see us do that? Did they hear us? I remember growing up as a kid, and I didn't always, uh, you know, I was a kid. I, there was times I got in fights. There was times I did things, and, and I know I don't look like a fighter. I'm not really a fighter, but there was times that uh, I like to fight with my brother, and I like to get in trouble, and I like to do all kinds of things. But I'd walk in the house, and I'd hear Mama with the door closed in her room, and she'd be crying out to the Lord, and she'd be speaking in tongues, and she'd be calling out our name, my brother's name. She'd be doing all kinds of things because she understood that she must keep redigging the well because there's a generation that's coming up that needs a spiritual touch of God. Somebody say, I don't want dirty water. Notice what the enemy will try to do in your life. Maybe you're such a spiritual giant that he'll leave you all alone whenever you're alive. But then he'll come along behind you and try to cover up everything that you have accomplished. That's what happened in Abraham's life. The enemy come along, and, and if he had been successful, it would, there would have been a, a generation that didn't know the promises of God that would not inherit the promised land. There would be a, a, a people we would not be here knowing uh, about the blessing of God through the seed of Abraham. Uh, but, but Abraham knew that, that he must keep up and he must teach and train another generation. You need a family well. You need a family well. I'm thankful for a daddy who dug a well. Are you thankful for, it might not have been a daddy, it might have been a mama, it might have been a grandma, but there was probably somebody in your life that dug a well for you. It might have been a friend, it might have been a neighbor, it might have been a great grandma, I don't, I don't know who it was in your life, but they dug a well for you. And that's why you're sitting in this church house today, because somebody dug a spiritual well. I remember sitting in my great grandpa's house. The house was so short I could literally do this and touch the ceiling. He was a really short man. He didn't need a house that very big at all. But what a well. What a well he dug. He'd go in and he'd greet you and he'd love on you. He'd want to feed you because he had the gift of hospitality. And then you'd sit down to eat, and he'd say, no, we got to pray first. And folks, it wasn't a God is good and God is great. You got down on your hands and knees, and you pulled that chair out. And you begin to pray not only over the food, but over every generation, over every missionary that he knew, over every pastor that he knew. And, and can I tell you that the food got cold, and I was hungry. And before you left his house, he'd look at you, and he'd say, children, because we were his children. Live right. And he'd say, let's pray before you leave. And he'd pray over you and over your travel home. And then he'd get happy in the Lord and he'd say, thank you, Lord, for that good, good, sweet, sweet Holy Ghost. You see, he had dug a well. And I'm so thankful. Folks, you may be here today and you may be the very first person in your house. Children. You're like children to me. You're teenagers. I love every one of you. Your parents may or may not come to church, but you can dig a well that they will come to know Christ and that your brothers and your sisters and your heritage and you'll fill up a pew. Dig a well. I feel this so strong in my spirit this morning. The enemy wants to throw dirt in it, wants to dirty up the worship. Dirty up the doctrine, but we're determined that our children 
that they'll drink from the same well. That our grandchildren will drink from the same well. When I say the same well, I'm not talking about tradition. Please hear me. I, I, I don't care about tradition. What I care about is an experience with the Holy Spirit. An experience with God. An experience that goes beyond just get up in the morning and thank God for, for life. But, but an experience that, that is reaching out and doing things for the, for the Lord. That is concerned about the kingdom. That, that, that is filled with power of the Holy Spirit. You see, there's got to be a generation. There has to be an Isaac generation. Now, I, I, I spoke today to, to, to a generation that is the Abraham generation. But folks, kids, teens... Young people in here, I want you to know that the Isaac generation also has to come to life and understand that there are some wells that your daddy dug or that the uh, uh, people in your life dug, and you got to keep them redug for yourself. You see, there will come a day when Pastor Brian will no longer be preaching. I don't know when that day is, but that day will come. And there's got to be a generation that will rise up take the mantle and say I remember the well I remember the well that my daddy dug my daddy got up about 5.30 almost every morning read a Sunday school lesson prayed over us prayed over work prayed over everything and faithful dug the well are you digging father I speak a generational blessings Generational blessings over these spoons. Yes, we know, God, that they're symbolic. But we also understand that they're spiritual application. God, and I speak blessing upon blessing that will flow, God, from generation to generation until the enemy is just wore out, envious because of what God has done in our lives. I'm digging a well. I'm digging a well. Judges 2.10 says this. After that whole generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation grew up who neither knew the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. The next generation needs a well. And that well is dug through fasting and prayer. Pastor, why do you talk so much about fasting and prayer? Because I've done it and it works. I want to give you a tool that works in your life. Fasting and prayer works. Because what happens, fasting and prayer will tell you that that drink of spiritual water that you just took a drink of, that it's dirty. It'll say, it'll identify the dirt in your well. Many times we, we fast and we pray for results, but what really happens is the results happen upon us. And we start to get convicted about the dirt that's in our well. And, and so we, we, we've got some, some dirt in our well that we got to get out. And it comes through fasting and prayer because it's a humbling experience. Isaac redug the wells. And it says something interesting. And he didn't change the names. Pastor, what does that mean? The name had a meaning. Abraham had dug the wells. Not only did it refer to him, but there was spiritual application and spiritual meaning to those wells. And so Isaac redug the well and he didn't rename it. I mean, knows there's some things that's been dug out spiritually for us that we don't need to rename. Salvation still salvation. Sanctification still sanctification. Uh, you see, healing is still available. We don't, we don't need to rename it. Uh, we don't need to reclassify it because there's some old wells that have been dug out for us that are good that we don't need to rename. Don't change the name. You see, somebody dug a well. The water's still there. But as the enemy come along and tried to put dirt into it, say, God, I'm going to do some digging. You see, if you'll determine that, I'm convinced, all of a sudden, slosh, I'm going to hit some water that my great-grandma dug up. And it's a river flowing. And it, and it is something that I, I need in my life. So I'm going to keep digging. I'm going to keep believing God. Don't rename the well. The water's still there. It's still there. 
Adults, can I tell you, no matter how messed up your children are or how far they are from God, there's a well in your house. Will you redig it? Somebody dug it for you. Now it's your time. Dig the well. Can I tell you, the old wells are sweet. It's good water. Can I tell you, you don't have to rename sin. Sin is sin. You still got to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. You still need to be baptized in water and in the Holy Ghost. You still need to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And can I tell you that we've prettied up the way we say things. But heaven is heaven and hell is hell. And if you live a life of sin, you will live in hell eternity, for eternally, forever. That's the truth. I can't pretty that up. I'm not going to feed you some watered-down gospel because this generation and the generations to come, they don't need the watered-down Holy Spirit. They need the power of the Holy Ghost in their life. Heaven is heaven. I know you don't hear that preached too much. Hell is hell. There's still a, a price. The wages of sin is death. God said, I didn't say it. I'd rather you be hot or cold but not lukewarm. Because if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Then I love you enough to tell you the truth. And honestly, I don't like standing up here and saying sin is sin and there's a place and that you, for you to go if you're a sinner. I, I don't like that. I'd love to, be, to, to, to tell you all the time that everything's going to work out real good for you. But that's not true unless you're living for the Lord. And then you're not even concerned about what works out good for you down here because you, you know you've got an eternity in heaven. There's some wells that you don't need to reinvent or rename because some generations before us did a good job digging the well. Declare with me, this is my shovel. It represents a spiritual application. I'm going to dig a spiritual well. Not just for my family, but the next generation. And the next generation, God will help you.